Hello! Welcome to the life of a Latina engineer. It feels like forever since I've recorded anything. Anyway, so today I want to start with a topic that I think it's good to address, especially if you're a college student that's getting ready to graduate, maybe you're starting to do your internships, so you get more of an idea of what you're looking for, what to expect, and how to move from a position that you might not like. Maybe your first internship was not what you were looking for, but it's also important because the first job can have a really big impact into you know, your idea or your expectation of what engineering is or what you will be doing for the rest of your life. So the main topic of this video is going to be like how to find your perfect engineering job. And I'm not going to be talking about application process or like how to find the jobs to apply for or even like interviews or any of that. But right now it's more like for you to find out what is really what you want, what to take into consideration what to think about when you reflect on your internships or maybe your first job or just in school, what is gonna work for you and what you're really looking for. Because even though you study mechanical engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, or any other STEM career, doesn't mean that you specifically have to be in that position, in a position that specifically calls out mechanical engineering, if you have a mechanical engineering degree. So we have that flexibility to move around and I guess I want you guys to understand that you're not stuck to that specific job because engineering gives us tons of skills so you can apply them into the very different field, very different uh, jobs. So a good job is not gonna be a good job for everyone. So somebody might really enjoy the job, they might say that it's the best job, that it works for them, but that might not be the case for you. That might be the opposite of what you're looking for. Maybe their job requires you to travel an hour to get there, and for you, commute is really a big factor in your day. For example, with me, I will drive an hour to work, an hour, maybe an hour and a half back, and that will really, really change my day. Like, I would get home, and I will be really, really tired, really really annoyed from everyone that was driving in traffic and it just completely changed my perspective of the job like I loved the job but at the same time I hated it because I hated to drive every single day back home I was just exhausted and nobody wanted to talk to me because they knew I was in a bad mood just from driving back home so it doesn't have to be things like specifically driving or like the commute but there are things that make it your ideal job while you're looking for Okay, so before we start getting into the points that I have, because I have one, two, three, four, five points that I want to discuss today, uh, be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Here we talk everything about engineering life, women in engineering, minorities in engineering, first generation students, anything, any resource that I can think of that fall into all those categories, we we'll can cover them here. We're also on Instagram, Etsy, uh, we have a website, so be sure to check us out everywhere. Okay, so number one is, do you currently have a dream job? or like a dream position. Are you one of those people that knew what you wanted to do since you were younger and were really sure about what you were looking for, what you like, what you don't like? Uh, if that's the case, the things like it's way easier for you because you know what you're expecting, what you're looking for. But there are people that don't. Like for example, I didn't know what I wanted to study until I was in college. Like I was already in college, still trying to figure out what I was gonna do. So even as I already knew that I was gonna be a mechanical engineer, I didn't know exactly like what I was gonna focus on because it's so broad, it has so many possibilities. I was like, okay, what job am I looking for? So if you have this dream job that you've been looking for since you were younger, then it might be easier to just go find it, try it, and then actually learn if you like it or not. Because even then, even if we have a dream job, but we haven't had anyone maybe like maybe your parents are not in it or no one in your family can actually tell you what it is about maybe you have a wrong idea of what the job is and maybe you've been waiting to get this job you get it you get a good salary and then you start working there and you find out that this job doesn't really fit with you you don't really like it and now you have to go and find what is it really that makes it your perfect job. So if you do have that dream job, for example, let's say I want to work at NASA as an electrical engineer focusing on this thing. Why is it that you want to work at that specific company? Does somebody else work there that told you they have a really good environment? Is it the prestige name that comes with good reputation? Why do you want to work there? Now, maybe it has a good name. Maybe it's uh, you know Northrop Grumman, uh, NASA, Lockheed Martin, maybe it is a name that you know comes with this like you know empowerment just within saying that you work there but what's the work environment what are the benefits does it align with what you want to do uh, what's the environment do you get along with the co-workers or is it gonna be terrible where nobody really like looks out for you or like nobody really pushes you to try harder or learn things or help you out uh, all those things come in hand with 
you know, working somewhere. It's not just I work at Google and that's just going to fix my life forever. So think about why really you want to work there. Maybe you do have someone, maybe your dad or your brother or someone works there and you know that it's this great place to work for. Then there's nothing wrong with knowing that you want to work there. Uh, it's just one thing that I would want to point out that do some research and learn more about the company as you're getting closer to finding this job. As far as position, uh, I know not everybody has someone that has a job or study the same career as you are now that you're in engineering, especially if you're a Latina or a female in engineering. Uh, so it might be hard to know exactly you know what you're looking for. Uh, and this is where I find like if you have this specific job then start there if you don't then start with one and then go along and start learning from all of them but start finding people that have the same jobs or uh, careers or degrees that are similar to what you're looking for ask them what they do ask them all the different things they focus on because some might be really into one topic like thermodynamics but then some might be more general where they see a bunch of different things within their degree so you can learn from everything that multiple people do so don't just take one example and think that's it that's all mechanical engineers do so find multiple people see if you like it if you don't like it maybe so try a different variation a different emphasis within the same career so that you can learn what they do and then more more or less shift what you're looking for with all the knowledge that you have gathered. Point number two is have you done any internships or do you have an emphasis on your major? The second one, for example, as mechanical engineers, we were able to graduate with just a mechanical engineering degree or we were able to graduate with a mechanical engineering degree with an emphasis on renewable energy, robotics, and things like that. We have a couple of options. So are you already leaning towards one of those options or do you just plan on taking general? then maybe look into things that are going to help you find that emphasis and maybe you don't get it within your major like written underneath it but you are learning more about it, you're watching videos about it, you're researching about it, your internships can focus on that um, which brings us to the other part of this point is have you done any internships and this is where I want to go into you don't have to like every single internship that you do. Maybe your first internship, you really don't like it. Maybe they don't even have you doing engineering and stuff. So it doesn't mean that that's what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Don't be like afraid of going into a full-time position once you graduate, maybe because your internships suck. With internships, there's really like a hit or miss. It could be really good, it could be really bad. Like you really don't know, especially because they're temporary positions. Some companies have really structured programs from interns. Some companies don't have anything at all. They just take the interns and then they'll figure out what to do. And sometimes there's not a lot to do. Some people don't even realize they're there. So if you have done internships, if you haven't liked them, don't worry about it. Just See what are the things that you don't like. Maybe you just didn't like because there wasn't stuff to do, but it wasn't that you didn't like engineering. There just wasn't something in engineering to focus on, so you weren't excited about it. Maybe it was a part of engineering of your major that you didn't like. For example, with mechanical engineering, there's thermal, there's design, there's fluids. Maybe in your specific internship, they focus on fluids and you really, maybe it was a class that you really struggle or you really just don't enjoy, you don't find passion, you rather focus on design then you know that when you're looking into a company, what the company specializes in, and when you read the descriptions, you know what you would be doing during that position. If you see similar tasks to things that you were doing in your internship that you didn't enjoy, maybe that's not the job for you. Now, if you did like those internships, then you can look into either continue to work for that company for an extended internship, maybe for going back once you finish school, going back and talk to the acquaintances that you made while you were working there, see if there is a position open where you can go in, or just looking into positions that are similar to what you did in your internship going from that and wanting to expand wanting to learn more on what you already learned and did in your internship the other thing is like internships are like a way to try out a job without actually committing like you know full-time because you're only doing it for three months maybe you're only doing it for a semester so you really get to learn during that time you get to learn what you like what you don't like but it's not like you're committed to be working there for two, three, four years. Point number three is what size company works for you. Do you want to work a big company where there's tons of engineers with your position and maybe have they all, you know, direct to one uh, engineering manager? Or do you want to be in a smaller company when there's one, two engineers, maybe five, and you have your engineering manager, but you're more free, more flexible to do different things rather than a bigger company when you have your job and you really have to stick to what you're assigned to. So what works best for you? what environment you like better, which ones you get to 
work better for you. For example, me working in a small company, I feel like I get to know everyone better. I feel like I like the change, the flexibility that I get to do many different things. Sometimes they're not specific to manufacturing engineering or mechanical engineering, but it's not like I'm doing it all the time. So it's like you do what needs to be done and it creates that kind of like you never get bored. As when I think of a bigger company, which I have not worked for a bigger company, but I feel like it's a little bit more, you don't have as many options to Maybe I've been doing drawings for like a month and a, like 30 days in a row and I want to do something else. Maybe I want to build it this time where I want to see the production floor, but there's no production in the same building. So you can't see it. You have, you're stuck in a computer 24 seven, which is something that for my, for example, for me, I didn't, I didn't enjoy. I knew I was going to get bored of being in front of the computer every single day. So that's when I see maybe a smaller company is a better fit. Maybe I'll try a bigger company next time and see which one I like better put the pros and cons. Uh, like I said, I cannot speak from a bigger company because I haven't. And if you have, if you're an engineer in a bigger company, larger company, please tell us your experience in the comments so that we can all learn from it. But again, they have different ways of working. If you intern at different size companies, you also get to learn which one works better for you. Point number four is pay. What are you looking for in earning as far as an engineer? What companies are able to offer you this salary that you're looking for? What is your, what are your goals? How long are you seeing yourself staying in a company? Do you want to stay one year, two years and then move to a next company? Or are you looking for a place where you want to stay for a longer time? For example, what I've noticed is that in smaller companies, you get people that stay for 10, 20, if, up until they retire. Uh, they're more like have companies where people stay in that company and just kind of find their place and then they stay there. Whether when you compare it to bigger companies, I feel like people are, maybe it is because there's more people. So you feel like they're jumping every two years to a new job. So, but it also has its pros and cons. I know I've heard that people that jump every two years, maybe for positions or companies, they tend to earn more as they go on. So just look at what you're looking for. Are you looking to make the most money that you can? Or are you looking to find an environment that you really like, that you're, you're looking for a good relationship with your coworkers? It goes back to the last point. And lastly, point number five is your career growth. So do you want to be an engineer from now to the rest of your career? Do you want to switch to different positions? What do you see yourself doing? For example, I myself see myself in, in a leadership position eventually. I've always been a natural leader. I know that I, while I enjoy engineering, I would also enjoy it would be more fulfilling to be in a leadership lead, leadership position, I'm having trouble saying leadership, maybe like a engineering manager where I'm supervising other engineers, I'm still doing engineering stuff, but I also get the leadership with it. Uh, do you want to grow even higher than that, not just an engineer? Because as engineers, we have still that possibility to go either higher, to stay where we are, to try different positions within the same level, but with different responsibilities. What do you see yourself doing? What do you think is going to be more fulfilling? And then see what type of job makes you do that grow or what type of company lets you do those jumps. Also, it's if you want to continue your education or not. Some companies sponsor that education, some don't. Some actually tell you that you should go for your MBA, for a master's, maybe just take a course. So that's where you go back to looking into what companies you're interested in. Maybe the company that has this brand name, maybe it doesn't sponsor as many as a school, maybe only those 50%, whether a smaller company that maybe the name is not as recognized will sponsor your full, you know, master's degree. Just in general, what are your plans? What type of jobs and what careers, what, what companies will support where you want to go? So all these things you kind of look at together as you're looking for what job specific for you, what's going to work, what's not going to work, what is really ideal for you. And one thing that I actually didn't mention was benefits that I'm thinking of now. Like for example, being a woman, having specific benefits that you're looking for, like for example, maternity leave, paid maternity leave, something that maybe I don't have right now, but that I think it's important to have later in another job when I'm ready to have a family. Things like that that make you say this job is not perfect for me because it's missing this, this and that that I think are really things that are going to support my lifestyle and what I want to do with it. Because like I see myself, your job is a really important part of your life. But sometimes your job is not your life so it doesn't get to rule exactly what you get and what you don't get to do. Look for that job that's going to support your lifestyle, your goals and what you want to do with your career and with your life. So I hope that all these tips help you can identify where to go to if you're looking for a job, what things to look for, not just that name on the position that says mechanical engineer or engineer one. Like I said, maybe your first job, 
or just in general a job might not be what you're looking for but that does not mean you're stuck there that does not mean that the job should stop you from looking for something else i think the job has to align to you i hope that these tips will help you learn your priorities your needs and your goals if you like this video please don't forget to like it and subscribe um, and also check us out on instagram and i'll be back with another video on engineering lifestyle thank you for watching bye